Hello, this is Corazon Alvina of the Museo ng Kaalamang Katutubo or Muscat. Muscat is a foundation that tends to museum development, research, and conservation of material culture and the layers of kaalaman or knowledge behind the creation. During these times of restricted face-to-face -face interaction, Muscat has been active in sharing its collection, research work, and stories in its publications, online lectures and exhibitions, and a podcast entitled Usapin Usapan, a venue for an informed and informative conversation between Muscat, represented by yours truly and one subject matter expert. This is part two of the Usapin Usapan about the Yakan cultural community of Basilan, still with our SME, Earl Francis Basilan. Earl is a lifetime member of the Philippine Folk Dance Society and the Lamitan Yakan Family Ensemble. He is listed in the Intangible Cultural Heritage Directory for Southeast Asia. He teaches in Ateneo de Zamboanga University. Let us go now to what you really know, which is dancing. What are the dances that the Yakan are known for? Yes, the Yakan are known for, first, we, uh, in the Yakan dance history, uh, according to Princess Lily Cuevas, uh, who happens to be my aunt, and she would always remind us that the only true and real dance of the Yakan is the Tumahik, the war dance. And performed by the males, but uh, with constant affinity or influence with the neighboring Sama, Bajau, Tausug, the Yakan learned how to do the pangalay, which they call now uh, among the members of the royal court. We have uh, a, a variation which we call Gandingan, and mm -hmm. among commoners we have uh, what is uh, what evolved from the Gandingan as the Pamansak. Yeah. But let me ask you, like uh, what they say, a sidebar or uh, you know, a side question. You mentioned royal court. There is royalty in Basila? Yes, we have. Uh, we Please have... tell us more about it because uh, you know, royalty and commoner are not really very um, familiar uh, yes. notions, no okay. concepts in in uh, in Philippines. Uh, yes. We only know, you know the late. Queen uh, Elizabeth or mm. the Japanese emperor, but uh, we do not really talk about royalty in the Philippines. So this is very interesting. So if you could um, please uh, elucidate for us yes. the royal court and the commoners of Yakan. The Lamitan was founded by uh, Datu Kalun, uh, whom we know in history as Pedro Javier Cuevas. Uh, mm. He was a but he was given uh, rights uh, to become a Yakan leader when he married a daughter of the Panglima in Lamita. What? Where was he from? We have pictures of him, actually, archival pictures of Mr. Cuevas. Yes. He, he's Tagalog, no? He's Tagalog. He's from Cavite. Yes. yes. Anyway, sorry for the interruption. Please go on. He, he yes. will... so, uh, when he married a... Uh, a daughter of the Panglima who happens to uh, be part of uh, a, in a Yakan society, uh, uh, a family of the Panglima would be uh, coming from the upper class. So he married the uh, Apmania, the first wife. So that's how it started. And uh, I believe it was in one of the discussions in the book of that to Kalun, uh, a certain sultan from Sulu gave him that uh, the title with uh, with the special uh, rights declaring him as the Datu of uh, Basilan that's why he has his name as Datu Kalun mm -hmm. and later on uh, this family uh, grew yeah, marrying also other uh, members of the upper class in the Yakan community. So then we we had the last Sultan, the the, the son of Datu Kalun, Al Sultan uh, Ibrahim Taha Kalun, uh, 
or what the yaka yakans know and know as a uh, datu kunding uh, he's the father of uh, princess lily cuevas the last reigning uh, ruler yaka, mm -hmm. uh, of the of the lineage in lamitan so and then they would have this uh adatuan which they uh, term for the royal court mm -hmm. So that's why uh, there, when there would be uh, American troops in the past or guests in the locality, they would really pay homage to the Datu of Lamitan. What, uh, let's um, uh, go back a little bit. Hmm. What is a Panglima? A Panglima <sighs> is a community leader uh, mm -hmm. that is also considered to be a high status individual. Okay. He who would... Uh, have uh, vast lands, would own horses, uh, would own also sets of instruments and weaving mm -hmm. implements. And so that's considered a uh, panglima or a community leader team. Baga. So also the, the uh, possessions of this person elevates him. Yeah. Uh, do the possessions elevate him to a certain uh, status no yes. and, and and this status is what brings him to the royal court am yeah. i interpreting it correctly yes oh. and into having an established uh, title like datu who happens to be also a son of a sultan mm -hmm. or in the yakan uh, context yeah and the religion has nothing to do with it. I mean, being uh, Muslim or otherwise has no bearing on uh, being a member of the royal court. Yes. Uh, none. None. But uh, most all, mostly those who are within the royal court are Muslims. Yes. I see. I yeah. see. Most of them. And this persists to today. Uh, sad to say that uh, Auntie Lily died uh, last 2019. So uh -huh. she asked of the children of the last reigning sultan. So there's not, no royal court at this point? No anymore. Yes, none. Uh, so it has... Uh, pass on. I, I see, I see. Anyway... Uh, thank you for that because we digressed. We were talking about dance, yes. correct? It's part, of, it's part of the history of the uh, Yakan dance history, Ikanga, because from the it's from the people inside this royal court who were mm -hmm. really, uh, elders who were really trained uh, to dance. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. also started teaching the younger ones. Hanggang sa yun nga nakita ng, ma, ng, ng mga people from the outside court itong mga sayaw ginaya ng mga kumbaga sa, sa term sayakan ni mga local ika nga, or which we refer to as commoners they started imitating the dances coming from the royal court uh, kaya nag-evolve din yung dances at nagkaroon din ng variations we, uh, you said that the, the what is considered the uh, Real. authentic dance yes. is the first one. It's a war dance uh, ah, danced yes. by by men. Yes, it's the war dance. And, and just, this is warring against what? Is it uh, like uh, the others, which would be Christians and uh, and Muslims, or is it against no. one ethno linguistic group against the other, or uh, a family against the other? What is the uh, the bone of contention of this uh, war dance? Okay. First is to settle disputes in the community, mm -hmm. and la, or may mga especially about if we would relate to dance. If there will be two men who would fall in love with the same woman, so mm -hmm. there would that 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 would be there or the panglima to settle this and they, he would ask the two gentlemen to to settle it through the tumahik so that's one to settle okay. this two uh, it's really a part of uh, going to combat or going to war with mm -hmm. the other uh, yakan community that was in the past 
uh, if a, a, a ruler from a particular sitio would like to get another sitio to become part of his domain, so he would do that. And so they would have the tumahik. And, and as a uh, another significant thing why the tumahik is very important among the yaka is that it's part it's a symbolic ritual of mm -hmm. showing the groom's uh, responsibility now to take on the challenge of taking care of his bride and his new family. So there were instances in the past that uh, a wedding ceremony would not push through if the groom uh, would not know how to do the tumahik. So hindi siya papayagang umakyat sa bahay ng bride at uh, pagpatuloy yung ceremony. So kailangan kung hindi siya marunong uh, maghanap siya ng male relative na marunong sumayaw at mumultahin na lang, uh, babayara, bigyan na lang ng uh, special fee yung, yung sumayaw para sa kanya. Kasi... Pwede, po, pwede proxy pala. Yes, opo. Para mag-continue lang yung, mapagpatuloy yung ceremony. Kasi mm. may malalim na meaning po yung saya ka ng tumahik. First, it's to drive away evil spirits during the wedding day. So he has to symbolic, symbolically strike the spear. That's the first thing that he will do towards the house of the bride. Ooh. To drive away the evil spirits. And then he will continue on dancing. This is to show that he's now ready and capa or capable to uh, protect his uh, bride and the family that he will uh, uh, have with this uh, bride. And the dance is accompanied, but what by but by what kind of music? Uh, it's accompanied by the tagungo, the traditional yakan gong and psalm. Mm -hmm. we, we have a special musical piece for tumahik, which we call megtambul, uh, drum-like uh, playing of the gongs. So it would, uh, let's listen to, can we listen Tita, to a sample? Yes. yes, please, we would love to. I mean, I think the audience would love to hear. Music for the Tagungo. So this is Megtambul, the music for the war dance. Is that audible, Tita? Yes, it is. It's the Megtambul. It comprised two gongs and one uh, bamboo, uh, split bamboo. It was called the ganda. But it is very fast, so the dance is quite yes. fast. Well. Yes, the dance is fast. Yeah, it's only performed by the males. And of course, the males wear special clothing for this because it's considered a ritual. Yes, and the Yakan men were really trained uh, in the past how to do the tumahik because it was part kumbaga uh, kung meron tayong PE classes ngayon, ito yung mm -hmm. fitness activity rin ng ating yakan men noong unang panahon. So they were really trained how to do the tumahik. As a form of fitness and to pro protect themselves from uh, uh -huh. war. Uh, okay. So to settle disputes, to prepare themselves. Kung may mm -hmm. pa na mangyayari. So to settle, kailangan marunong sila. Marunong sila noon. Ah, I see. Okay. And so interesting, Tita, with this dance is that mm -hmm. it imitates the movement of frenetic uh, uh, or enraged horses. Oh, Ang papakinggan nyo yung music, di ba? Mm -hmm. Sounds ng hoofs ng kabayo. Clack, clack, clack. Because they because they have horses on the island. No? Yes, so, yes. Time. And, and they figured very... Di ba they had uh, uh, races, they had games, no? And sports using horses. Apart from, 
from making, uh, I mean, using them as transport. Yes. In uh, in the Lamilamihan, nung ako ay five years old, mm. or three years old, 1983, when the first Lamilamihan as a community festival was held. Okay. Napanood ko pa po yung Megpaso. It's a horse trotting contest. A what? Horse trotting. Yung paghuhuli ng kabayo? Trotting. T R O T T I N G yung magandang paglakad. Ah, trotting. Ah, so yes. Naglalakad yung mga kabayo. Yes. Opo, then then nag uh, nagpapakitang gila sa paglakad. Yung mm. may sarili silang style. And then napanood ko rin yung kura magparagan. Horse racing. Ah. Naglalaro sila. So, kaya hindi nila malimut, uh, makakalimutan ang kabayo sa buhay nila bilang yakan kasi sa traditional attire, merong as, uh, fringes. Ang tawag dun, jambo. Yung uh, tassels na nakatali siya, nakatahi po sa pants ng mm-hmm. uh, yakan at kung sa, sa upper parts or sa blouse, sa badyo nila, ang mga kalalakihan ay meron ding jambu or tassel sa collar. Nila- Pero, so, yung, yung horses din, di ba, they have beautiful uh, bells no around the neck? They have uh, what is called kung kung. Kung kung. Yes, the the horse bells uh, around the around the neck of the horses. Yes. Kaya rin meron sa damit ng yakan very symbolic of the kung kung ang ang batawi ang buttons ng the buttons. Yes, kaya. Ah. Kung isasay ko po damit ko. Sige. Oh, you have batawi. Yes. Uh, ang, ang damit ko ay ang may batawi na original. So silver sila. Silver, yes. And gold plated. <laughs> mm, how nice. Beautiful. I love Batawi. I yeah. remember the I remember what uh, Apu Ambalang was wearing when she was photographed for our folio. Beautiful. Apo. She had Batawi all over. Amen. Yes. At malalang ganda. Totoo yung Batawi kasi parang kung kung. Maingay. You, saan ginagawa yung Batawi? Ah, meron po sa Lamitan. Ah, so you also have metal smithing. It's part of uh, the skills, part of the uh, traditional arts of the yakan would be metal smithing. Meron silang metal smithing na uh, paggawa ng barong noon, pero ngayon mm-hmm. di, uh, iilan na lang po. Okay. Pero talaga sila ng batawi. So they make uh, weapons, they make, uh, uh, they make decorative stuff. Yes. And, uh, do they do they also make domestic implements? Uh, nowadays, po tita, uh, wala. wala na po. Ako, Ay, another... Mga spear natin na bujak mm-hmm. sa tumak yes. ay gawa ng blacksmith na yakan. Noon. Yeah, there I've seen some budyak na silver yung yung ano yung yes. yung decoration sa decoration sa shaft, no? Yes. So Uh, they must have been uh, really uh, ceremonial, no? ceremonial yes. weaponry. Po. Sa ngayon, pag naglalamihan tuwing June, uh, mm-hmm. halos lahat, lalo na papag-dance troops ng schools, okay. yari sakit na lang yung spearhead. Pero kapag malalaman nyo yan pag totoong uh, tumahik warrior ang sumasayaw or na-pass on na sa bata, ay meron pa silang totoong budyak. Uh-huh. Yeah, silver. Yeah. And uh, part of uh, part of their uh, what would you call pamana, no? Part of the bahandi. Yes, opo. Pusaka, ika nga. Mm, Ang... Pusaka. Pamana. Pamana. And uh, so I hope that they are able to keep this material culture because it uh, it's them, you know. Your the material culture also culture also characterizes a. A, a group, no? Yes. Identifies you. And uh, let us hope that uh, people keep their material culture. It's not always uh, possible or easy. Yes. But there's always hope for that. No? Okay. So, um, 
yung sabi mo inintroduce yung pangalay and it is called what? Yeah. Among, uh, sa amin po, kasi isa po ako sa mga naturuan ni Auntie Lily ng Princess, mm-hmm. uh, ang sayaw po na among the members of the royal court, sa mga pamangkin na tinuruan, we call that gandingan. Mm-hmm. That, would, wow. that would also be very similar to the the pangalay, the old pangalay, kasi meron tayo ngayon mga, mga kabagong pangalay, uh, maraming kembot, maraming galaw, so bawal po yun, that's tabu. Mm-hmm. So, oh. Ang sikreto natin pag sumasayo ng pangalay is that uh, uh, no matter how fast the music, music would go, the dancer has to go slow. In contrast to the music, so that the fluidity of movement uh, will be executed will be uh, exhibited in the arms kaya meron tayong mga terms na languid arm uh, gestures mm-hmm. uh, sa pagsayaw ng pangalay yun that's a gandingan that's how uh, that's the dance of the the ones who were trained by princess lily cueva so uh, she started dancing when she was three years old that was in 1939 so nung mm-hmm. Siyang, kasi noon, tita, bawal po ang yakan girls na sumayaw in public. Kaya ang mga kalalakihan lang talaga nakakapag- I see. Opo. Mm-hmm. Kaya in, sa, sa evolution or sa, sa dance history ng yakan, uh, kaya tumahik lang din talaga ang kinoconsider ng yakan as the real dance. Kasi mm-hmm. yeah, in the later part na ng ng time na di, lumabas yung pangalay sa yakan. Nakita nilang unang sumayaw si Princess Lily in public. Kasi dati sumasayaw lang talaga siya for the uh, guest ng father niya sa mga mm-hmm. uh, kadatuan, yung mga members ng upper class. Yan. So nang simula siyang nakita ng uh, itong mga yakan ladies natin sa community, ginaya siya. Kaya mm-hmm. lang, ang music ng yakan, di ba mabilis? Narinig yes. mo, tumble. It's so fast. Kasi ganun din yung tagunggo music. Yung may pagtutugtog ng kuriri at uh, other uh, musical pieces, mabilis po talaga. So, itong mga yakan ladies at that time, sumunod sa rhythm uh, sumunod po sa tempo ng ng tagunggo na mabilis kaya mabilis din ang paggalaw nila kaya tinawag siyang pamansak pamansak and, yes kaya nagkaroon tayo ng pamansak and, and syempre constant uh, affinity with the uh, sama kasi mm-hmm. pagkaintindihan sila in terms of that language language Yes, halos magkapare kasi in, di ba sa anthropolo- anthropology word natin, uh, parang isang big family ang ang uh, sama and that uh, mm-hmm. time. So halos magkapareho yung uh, words na ginagamit, kinakaintindihan sila. So natuto rin tong yakan na sumayaw ng, uh, nagkaroon sila ng pamansa. Yun. Without, without Let's na- see. Uh, okay, sorry. Coming from the princess. Kasi sa amin, tin- tinuruan po talaga kami na ito, kahit mabilis yung music, dapat ang galaw ng kamay ay kukontra sa tempo. Mm. Same thing with the old pangalay and old eagle. So, so, But uh, going back to the music, you said that okay. mabilis, no? Tagunggo. <clears throat> Sorry. Are there instances that music is played lang as music? and it accompanies nothing yes there is so there music for relaxation music just to please themselves yes they can play it uh, without uh, uh, accompanying a dance so Pero, and, un- you, uncle uwang he plays like that no i mean yes. uncle uwang of course does not play for, to accompany a dance or mm. anybody no Opa. he it is the his music uh, after all he is gamaba is played as music. Yes, yes, yes. Kasi may mga musical instruments din po tayo na uh, tinutugtog uh, sa bawat part ng rice production. So, oh. sa palay, mayroon silang tinutugtog hanggang sa after harvest. 
Hanggang sa pag, uh, patapos ng ani, merong uh, uh, instruments na tinutugtog. Meron din for relaxation, yung gusto nilang, uh, lalo na pag uh, na ang bahay po ay nasa tabi ng farm, yung parang pa, pag, yun nga may practice sila na, di ba kahit sa Christians, o oh, mainit yung panahon, kailangan sumi hmm. para may hang- The hangin will come. Yes, uh, isa yakin, they would either play the gabang mm-hmm. the, or the kwintangan kayo. Yeah, so, yun. Parang What na, is the kwintangan kayo? Can you explain? I think uh, uh, our audience would appreciate uh, yes. an explanation of what the kwintangan kayo is. Yes. So, the kwintangan kayo is a very special instrument among the yakin. Mm-hmm. Uh, It's played night and day during the very months of the Palay. Kasi okay. It's a manner of consoling the Sultan Palay, the spirit ancestors to to aid in the uh, bearing of the Palay, the greens. Para mas oh. lup- kaya parang hinaharana ng uh, pagtugtog ng kwintangan kayo yung uh, king ng Palay. Oh, how wonderful, you know, how, how wonderful that, you know, it is all tied up. It is music, it is uh, spirituality, mm-hmm. and it is something, it is also something mortal because you need to eat, and it's very human. So, yeah. it is a very integrated, uh, very integrated. concept. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful. We imagine it would be made up of five graduated logs. Ayan. Okay. With the longest on top until in, uh, in decreasing sizes at, mm-hmm. the, at the bottom. Okay. It can be played on a structure that would uh, stand 7 to 10 feet high. Uh, or on mm-hmm. the house uh, near the field or at the porch of the house if the field is just near or just mm-hmm. around the corner. And so... It's a play din nga night and day to console the king of the palay. And I have here a music sampler. Please, uh, we would yes. love to hear it. By Uncle Uwang. It's, oh, Uncle Uwang himself. Good. Yes. Uh, the, the MB himself. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> He sent to him playing the ngalagpi. As in, uh, uh, nagaharana sa, sa king ng palay, sa sultan palay. So let's okay. salita yung uh, pintangan tayo o parang mm-hmm. ano nga yung uh, ng king ng pala yung sultan pala kasi pagbigyan mo kami bumunga ka pa ng marami mm-hmm. ng ani. another sidebar Earl how old is Uncle Uang? He, he's doing fine uh, growing old uh, old ba talaga Ayan. Yun nga lang, minsan sa katandaan, uh, minsan mahirap tumayo. Mm-hmm. Po, pero andyan pa naman po siya. Uh, yeah, that's nice. That's good to know. Uh, ang uh, inaalala yan na lang po talaga siyang tumugtog at uh, magturo ngayon. Kasi uh, yung eyesight niya po, sad to say, uh, hindi na po talaga siya nakakakita. At all now, noon yeah. ano lang siya, di ba? Challenged with his sight, but now he can uh, he can no longer see. Yes. Opo, dark na raw po talaga. Oh, 
kung how sad naman for somebody who needs his eyes to play. But he doesn't need his eyes. He only needs his heart. His heart and his hands. Yeah. Yes. And he has his strong ears. And ears, of course. After all, he's a musician. Anyway, so we will uh, continue our um, our conversation if you're not pagod yet. Talking uh-huh. about the uh, Yakan uh, <laughs> culture and and um, we've already talked about the nature as well. Na walang wala na mabagyo pero magaganda ang mga magag das magaganda ang ani maganda ang um, planting situation. Where do the Yakan get the textile? I mean the fibers that they weave into textile. Yes. Um, they don't grow cotton. They use mainly cotton, no, not abaka. Not, uh, meron po silang abaka noon, tita. Mm. Kaya nakapag-suot uh, pa ako noon nung malita ko, pinatry ako ni Auntie Lily ng sawal na okay. yung abaka. Yun. Oh. Yan lang, sa, ang, hindi siguro na sanay ang yakan dahil makati. Uh, mm. Iba yung texture ng abaka. Uh, ginamit nila yung meron silang pinapala, tinutubong uh, pinya sa kanilang backyard. Okay, pinya. Pinya, yes, they do have. Kasi nakakita pa ako nung malita ko. Ang tanda na daw talaga. Nung <laughs> <laughs> malita ko, literal din na maliit, mm-hmm. uh, nakakita ko ako ng mga pinya sa backyard at yun ang ginagamit nilang thread. Gaya nung paano ng ang paggawa ng uh, pinya thread natin sa Katagalugan. Mm-hmm. Oh, that and is that, interesting. I've not seen any, any pinya, pinya cloth from Yakan. Ang kwan po, tita, ang mga pagalbato po noon. Ay, naku, wala na ngayon. Opo, uh, nagiging pinya silk siya. But they've always used silk and cotton. Yes, they, right. especially for their saputangan. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I did not know about the uh, the pinya that uh, they had grown it and they also knew the technology for extracting the fibers yes, and pinok- weaving. Tapos hinihimay-himay tulad mm-hmm. talaga ng katagalugan at yung sa ikat. Parang ganun yung proseso. Maliban lang siguro sa pagtali-tali. Yeah. But in, they were made into what again? Uh, they are turned into the saputangan. Mm-hmm. The siniluan, yes. The olos pinalantupan, mm-hmm. the skirts ng girls. Uh, yes, the yes. Skirts, uh, the olos inalaman, uh, and uh, most especially the pagalbato, which is the 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 cloth that is used for uh, blouses. Ah, I see. But And, you you don't see them now. You as you said, it is pinya, pinya silk. Yes. And, So that is anymore. imported in imported thread already? Yes, they they buy it now at the department store. Uh, yung may mga brands na tulad ng uh, Apple, ng Moon, Monaco, yun mm-hmm. na po sa, sa, sa stores. That is what they now weave? Yes, that's what they're using now. And they, but before they used to grow piña and, and they had abaca? So, but they, they, did, they did not weave, they did not plant cotton. Cotton was not planted in Basila. Yes, in Basila. No? Parang uh, in-import na rin nila. I see. Noong <laughs> mm. mga early 90s, uh-huh. nakahanap sila ng solusyon na pwedeng uh, may... Uh, alternative for the pinya silk. Meron tayong tinatawag na thread na Dandy, yung brand. Yeah, yeah, I know Dandy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, according po kay Apo Ambalang, that's the next best uh, thread next sa pinya silk. Wow, ang, ang ninipis niyang mga yan. Can you imagine the painstaking yes. po. Uh, process? Kaya yeah, maganda siyang uh, habiin, gamitin sa paghabi. Yung mga uh, nilang cell-augmented, uh, single weft strand. Oo. Yun. Kaya, Kasi uh, ano yan eh, very smooth. Naalala ko yung dandy. So, wala, siyang, wala siyang himulmul sa, ano, sa spinning niya. True, that's true. Ang linis ng thread, ika nga. Mm-hmm. At lang yung uh, tulak sa warp, yung shuttle. 
Uh-huh. Lang siya nang tuloy-tuloy at maganda yung pag uh, pag uh, Batak sa yes ng ng baten ng bede. Mm-hmm. Yung at, pag uh, ano mo yung pag even out mo dun sa uh, anong pulling the comb towards you. Opo. Uh, yes, that's true. Yep. Maganda yes. yung pag dandy kaya lang naging mahal ang dandy. Of course, yung uh, di kayang bilhin ng ating yakan beavers. What so, do they use now? In, they use for instance, Apple. Ha? Huh? Apple na brand. Apple? Opo, Apple po yung pangalan ng brand. And uh, this is what is used in the atelier in the studio of Apo Ambalang in Opo, in, in, basi, in Lamitan. Opo. Pero yung nga yung time na buhay pa si Auntie Lily, nasanay, nakasanayan talaga ni Apo na dandy ang gamitin. Kaya mm-hmm. eh, matandaan niyo yung uh, deliberations natin. Okay. Ang lili yung mga sample works ni Apo Ambalang na mm-hmm. sa uh, Dandy. Yun. Yes, I I actually have the folio here in front of me and okay. I'm looking at uh, Apo at- sitting on the rock smoking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But wearing those those yeah. uh, beautiful pants, no? Opo. She- yes. Yun, may mga pants din siyang gawa pang Dandy. Yeah. Or, just go. Can you imagine the amount of uh, spools used for that? Mahal. <laughs> Mahal. Ito po nangyari sa Dandy. Kung ngayon magpapasadya po tayo, abot ang isang meter lang ng table runner at around 3,000. Oh my goodness. Kung gusto po talaga natin yung old pieces. Old pieces. Diba? How about how much would a um, saputangan be? The 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 ones with the robes, the ones with the uh, diamonds. And diamonds, so pwede po natin siyang classify into one diamond uh, saputangan that would uh, cost us, I think, one thousand. Mm-hmm. Five I one five to two thousand, and then more than five, my twelve, my my sixteen. May 32 na abot po ng, yung pinaka-latest na may pinasadya po ako 20K. Oo. But you know, of course, as I always say, hindi dapat tinatawaran yung mga Ito, kasi, uh, traditional artists natin, no? Uh, yes. That has always been our, well, our yes. standing, no? Hindi dapat tinatawaran yes. because <laughs> of the time, the talent, and this is traditional art of the community. It's something owned by everybody. Yes, opo. Yun. So, Kaya yun, sabi ko, yung sinabi sa akin, Kuya L, 20K yung pinapagawa mo ngayon na old design na 32 diamonds. Sabi ko, sige, walang problema. Basta magagawa ng ano, magagawa. In, the, in the old old way. No? Yes, old way. Because uh, yung Sino? hindi pwedeng nagsu-shortcut. I was talking to uh, Professor uh, Felipe De Leon the yes. other day, no? Okay. And he said this uh, nga yung nagiging some a pitfall, no? A, a danger, yes. a slippery slope in commercialization is that to to make it uh, more affordable, to make a product more affordable, to make it faster, ay binabawasan mo So, hindi na siya excellent. Binabawasan mo ng materials. True. Siguro sa bilang ng thread. Binabawasan mo ng time. Minamadali mo. Or actual size. And so, it, it deteriorates. No? Nadideteriorate yung, yung at, uh, object itself. At kung ma-observe nyo po, tita, pag yung gawa, ng, gawa ngayon na mabilisan, malalaki po ang designs. Mm-hmm. Of course, mas madali kasi yung gawin ang malaki yes. ng time. Pero wala ng identity ng yaka na practice nila noon yung fear of space. Now, fear of space. All the spaces with the tiny motifs. Ika nga. That would tell their sense of family, sense of closeness, togetherness. Kaya ah. di- designs nila. Kaya ayaw nila noon ma uh, fear of space ah na ayaw nilang maiwan untouch yung part ng war. Dapat may mga designs pa rin siya. Uh, may mga, kung meron, may, meron nga tayong tinatawag na suwa pendan, mm-hmm. uh, uh, embroidery-like, meron tayong suwa back cut na parang cross-stitch-like. Mm-hmm. 
we fill these uh, spaces on the wharf with different uh, motifs, puno kung puno. Eh, kung makikita natin mga old pieces na nasa museums, ang gaganda mm. talaga. Ang, ang liliit ng designs, pati detalyado. Yung may diamond ng malaki, meron pang diamond sa loob. Sa loob. Yes. Meron pang detalye. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Tsaka yung, yung is this si sinuluan, 'di ba, para siyang mga maliliit na bamboo. Talagang yeah. walang spatio doon, ano? Even the smallest one has meron some pa. meron reeds or you know, meron uh, ukil. Yeah, meron ukil. So, uh I hope they are going i hope that they are able to go back to revert to that kind of uh, uh fastidiousness in in their work no? isa rin tita yun nakakalimutan na nila yung agricultural practices nila bakit kasi take for example the seputangan iba maraming diamonds mm-hmm. uh, and diamonds in yakan weaving would represent the rice grains So, yung sepulchan, uh, uh, para siyang blueprint ng pangubatan. Yung uh, altar na ginagawa nila noon sa gitna ng palayan, uh, uh-huh. nil- so kung saan unang tinatanan ng, ng imam or ng tabib, yung special greens ika nga na unang i-offer sa spirit ancestors. Kaya kita nyo yung meron four corners ang seputangan. Yes. Diamond. Yes. At merong center, center diamond. Yes. Yes. Center diamond, ka nga, imagine nyo yan sa lupa. Gagawa yan ng structure na parang square. Tawag dun pangubatan ang uh, mm-hmm. kapit or ang imam. Ang, okay. The leader. At sa gitna niyan, merong center post na ilalagay. Uh-huh. And then sa sides noon sa corners, meron ding mga post din na ilalagay. Yan. Tapos sa center noon, doon doon unang itatanim ng imam yung special grain. Na kumbaga offering niya sa ancestors or sa spirit ancestors. Kaya rin itong Uh, ancient weavers natin, yakan weavers, para matandaan nila yung old practices nila sa farming na ilipat nila from the field to the, to the seputangan yung ganong ritual na ginagawa nila noong unang panahon bago sila mag-proceed sa actual planting. My goodness, what a wonderful... Uh cultural notion this is you know uh, and it it it's both agri- it's agriculture and uh, weaving no it's agriculture and culture yes it's it's, it's uh, the pe- same platform for them yes kung meron siyang pambabae po na seputangan di ba nakita niyo yung itsura ng piece ng lalaki yes. malaki katulad yes. ng seputangan malaki pero puro lines lines Yes. Teka, I'm thinking whether I've seen one. Yes, I think so. Kita nyo, uh, parang pleated siya, checkered. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. That is to remind the yakan as well na when they plant, they have to plant in straight lines, in straight mm-hmm. and in columns. And each line would represent uh, a particular crop to remind them that we are yakan, we plant a plant rice, We plant mm-hmm. kava, we plant corn, we plant coconut. Kaya usually may apat na band ng color yung ah. line, ay isang uh, uh, piece na mag- So, hmm. so go ahead. At, at uh, ganun din kung makikita natin, ha? kung magbiyabiyahe tayo, imagine natin coming from the port of Isabela, going to Lamitan, along mm-hmm. Highway, makikita po natin yan yung rows ng rubber trees and coconut trees na sobrang ang ganda ng linear formations. Kasi ganun sila magtanim noon. Noon? Not now? 
Yes. Ngayon, siguro kasi nasunod na yung pattern na gano'n, nasusunod na siya. Pero nung unang panong gano'n po talaga. Kaya na-translate din ng ancient weavers natin into the peace. Ha? Kaya nilalagay yung peace at saputangan sa ulo. Okay. So, constantly remind the yakan. Ha? Kaya nilagay siya sa... Sa, ang, ang pieces na ito ay head cloth ng babae at lalaki that is to remind them that these are our agricultural practices in the past na is, hindi na po halos ginagawa. But that is really stunning, you know. Uh, you, 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 the, the cloth has uh, four rows because of rice, cassava, mm-hmm. corn, and coconut. coconut. And then that And that is what you find in the field. Yeah. And the, 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 the saputanga naman is, uh, has the structure, the ritual structure that you put in the field. And it's reflected doon sa cloth. And you yeah. put them on your head so that you remember. Yes. Yun. How Yun. wonderful. Yes. Ang meaning ng bawat pieces ng clothing. Ng yakan. Oh, well, you know, I would like to close this conversation with that thought, you know, <laughs> culture and agriculture together. Yes. And then, uh, and then the cloth, cloth which yes. is, you know, cloth is, of course, uh, one of the, one of the um, most intimate of human experiences, mm-hmm. you know, even if we don't know it. No. And that <laughs> is put on your head so that you remember, remember it's both yeah. literal and poetic. Maraming salamat sa you, Earl, for telling us that. You know, for sharing that with our uh, audience. And I think so, such a uh, such a practice can be applied to many of our cultural patterns yes. and our material culture. Actually, talaga namang ganun eh. Magkatugma. The tangible is given re- actualization or realization by an intangible. So this is it. This is exactly a manifestation of that. It's to re- remind them of who they are as people of the earth, as farmers themselves, di ba? Mm-hmm. Lagi nating tandaan, ay, ang sinaluan ay, uh, ang designs niya ay from the bamboo. Kasi yes. it's mga bamboo shoots na nilalagay sabay doon sa altar. Kasi they, ah, yung ginagawang altar, nilalagay nila yung bamboo shoots. Nothing, yes, nilalagay yun sa corners at sa center peg. Kasi they would love to have uh, their palay to grow tall and flexible like the bamboo. The bamboo, oh my goodness. Kaya na-translate din yun ng ating magagaling na weavers sa kanilang pants. Hindi mo yan isinulat doon sa folio? Meron po tayo. <laughs> Napakaganda, napakaganda. At I, I think this is exactly what those people clamoring for a conversation about Yakan culture would like to hear. And so we have you to, to thank uh, for that, for, yeah. uh, for sharing what you know about the Yakan, for a greater appreciation by others who are non-Yakan but fellow Filipinos anyway. And as you said, for the Yakan, not forget who they are. Maraming salamat. And uh, I hope this is not the last. I hope uh, we shall be able to invite you either for a podcast or a lecture. Mari kasi Mari pag di ma- lecture kasi pwede ka magsayaw. Yes, pwede. Pwede ka magsayaw. Didiscuss yung uh, basic steps. Ang okay. Sikon, ang uh, clothing, articles of clothing ng uh, uh, traditional attire. Mapamusic so, din. Yun, kayo. Gusto nyo mag-lecture series tayo. Yes. So, naka-appropriate attire ka pag sayo mo. Yes. Katulad ngayon, tita, naka-upper ako. Yes. Again, maraming salamat, Earl. Apo. Uulitin. Huwag sanang madadala sa amin na matatabil at uh, mau- mauusisa. Thank you. You look wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Earl. See you soon. See you soon. God bless. At maraming God bless. Sal- maraming salamat. As usual, any usapan with Earl Francis Pasila is both instructive and entertaining. Muscat hopes that these past two usapin usapan about the Yakan prompt us to learn also about other Philippine katutubo, hopefully to enhance awareness 
in the appreciation of our cultures and to foster solidarity among all of us Filipinos. Thank you. Maraming salamat from the Museo ng Kaalamang Katutubong.